Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar. This is how to remember passwords, birthdays, appointments, and things to do. I'm Paul Novak, the Founder and Program Director here at IRIS. And I want to thank you for joining us on the webinar today. I think you're going to find it very useful. These are some of the most commonly forgotten things. Um, and I want to present some simple solutions and strategies for handling this. So this first slide kind of exemplifies uh, situations I think that we've all been in where you just can't remember something. Um, and the most commonly things that we try to not forget are, you know, birthdays or anniversaries, appointments. Obviously, you know, if it's a work-related appointment that you could be, you know, in jeopardy of losing your job. There's passwords that we've just got way too many and also things to do that are just way too many things to do, projects to handle. And I know there's a lot of other stuff that we have to remember, but we need strategies. We need systems and ways to kind of keep ourselves in check so that we don't forget this stuff. And all of us have, so I want to kind of give you an idea of how I've been able to get a handle on, you know, birthdays, appointments, passwords, and things to do. And by the way, this webinar is part of a core, a memory improvement course that we've been running. Um, there are a number of other ways to remember things, and in those other webinars, we're going to be discussing other related topics. Um, but in this webinar, um, I want to focus on these things. Now, the reality is there are a number of approaches you can take to remember birthdays, appointments, passwords, and things to do. For example, we can come up with mnemonic devices to remember these things. Um, we can uh, implement a number of memory systems that are out there. There's the link system, the peg system, the journey system, the substitute word system. Um, and by the way, these systems will be covered in this webinar course. Um, however, today we're going to discuss a simple way to handle these things because those other systems are better for more complex things that we have to remember. Um, so the best answer is usually the simplest one. When you have like multiple ways that you can solve a problem, usually the best way to go about it is in its, the simplest way. And that's what I want to use this webinar. I want to propose a simple solution to help you explain, to explain to you how I manage to keep track of all my appointments, how I manage to remember birthdays, because I've forgotten them in the past and now I'm a lot better at remembering them. Um, and it's, there's a system that I use for this, how I remember passwords and how I remember my tasks, things that I have to do, projects. And the simple answer to handling all this stuff is technology. Well, maybe not that kind of technology, but I'm sure you get the idea. Um, I want to talk about how we can use technology as an extension of our brain. Um, we're going to discuss some simple ways to use some simple technologies to help you remember birthdays, appointments, passwords, and things to do. And if you're not very tech savvy, I don't want you to think that this is going to be beyond you. It will not be. And for those of you that are tech savvy, you might be like, well, this is super simple. Well, sometimes the best answer is a simple answer. Um, and by the way, I know some people handle these things in other ways. So I'm open to suggestions. This is how I've been managing it. And I've managed, tried to manage birthdays and appointments and all these things in different ways. And so far, this is the best way that I've been able to come up with it. So I'm going to show you some tools that I use. Um, and I want to keep this webinar as simple as possible. So First off, um, let's start with birthdays and appointments. Very easy to forget, and many of us do, so let's discuss an easy way to remember. Now, I understand that some people use Facebook to remember birthdays, and that's fine, but this is only a partial solution, as a lot of you probably already know, because you're not friends with everybody that you know on Facebook. Um, you might pick and choose who you want to be friends with. You know, are you friends with people at work? Some people are like, you know what, I just want to keep it to close family and friends. Other people are friends with more people. So I want to show you how I remember birthdays and appointments without just relying on Facebook for that, because again, that's only a partial solution. I use Google Calendar. Now, I know this seems obvious to put it on a calendar, but some people add things to their calendar and they still forget. So I want to show you how I use Google Calendar to help me remember things. Because I used to do it where I would put it on the calendar and then I would just forget to check the calendar. And then that wouldn't be really useful because then it kind of defeats the purpose of putting it on the calendar to begin with. Um, now, by the way, I know there's a number of calendar applications out there. I'm recommending uh, Google Calendar. It's the one I'm most comfortable with. But I recommend using the one that you're most comfortable with. Now, I propose Google Calendar because it's better than the average calendar application. I've used a lot of calendar applications, and this is definitely one of the better ones. And I'm not saying it's the best one out there because, you know, you might be, there, there's so many different apps out there that, uh, and new ones popping up every single day. So I'm not going to say it's the best. But the reason I use it is because I have a Gmail address, and that's pretty convenient. And if you also happen to have a Gmail address, that's probably the most convenient option to go with. So let me share my screen here, and I'm going to show you how I go about using Google Calendar. 
let me uh, open up my calendar. You'll take a look here, and you see a lot of stuff going on here. Now, let me explain what all this junk is. Um, basically, I use, to remember birthdays, I use a reminders calendar. You see it right over here. Now, right now, you'll see there's a personal calendar, there's a bills calendar, there's a reminders calendar. This is one of the nice things about Google Calendar. You can have multiple calendars. Let me start by just showing you the reminders calendar. And these are all my reminders. So today I've got a reminder, I've got a reminder tomorrow, and some other reminders during the week. Now, I use my reminders, I put birthdays on here. So let's say there was a birthday uh, for Bob this Wednesday. I would put, you know, maybe birthday Bob. And I'd save it under the reminders calendar. And I can create that event and now it's on there. Now you see a little clock shows up next to it. This is because in my settings area right here, under settings, I have a default reminder for all reminders. Um, so you can add reminders to your reminder calendar. I know that sounds a little redundant, but let me show you what I mean. So I want to be reminded of Bob's birthday. Now one way that I remind myself is to make sure that I'm checking my calendar um, at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day so I can see what's coming up the next day. But if I edit this event right here for Bob's birthday, of course, if there's a party, I can add where and description and all of that, or maybe this is a birthday present idea that I need to get for him. You see that you can add reminders down here. So there's an email reminder right now for one minute before the event. Um, that helps me. Well, why an email reminder? For me, that's I know I check my email every single day, um, and I don't check it you know, 50 times a day, but I check it a few times a day, so I know that if I get that reminder in my inbox, I'm going to, for, to remember it. Um, now, you could also set it up where you get a text message. Um, and you could set this up for one minute before, one hour before, one day before, one week, one year, you know, whatever, five minutes, ten minutes. You could add multiple reminders, by the way, if you wanted. Um, so keep that in mind. This is a really good way to kind of remind yourself of birthdays. Now, by the way, the other thing is Bob's birthday is every single year on the same day. So I can click repeat here, and I could say, all right, repeats yearly. Done. Okay, now I've got this on my calendar repeated every single year, so I, have to, I don't have to remember every single year to add Bob's birthday on the 5th of September. Now, this is just a test that I added here, so let me delete it. Um, and if I was deleting it, I could delete all the events in the series. Now, you see I've got other reminders on here too. So um, on Tuesday, I'm trying to remind myself to buy a DC plane ticket because I know that um, tickets for uh, the airline that I'm going to be flying on usually go on sale between Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I want to make sure that I'm reminded to buy that DC plane ticket on Tuesday. That reminder would do me no good if I got it today or if it just popped up in my head. So I put it on my calendar so I don't have to think about it. Um, now, here are some things you want to avoid um, putting on this reminders calendar. You don't want to put reminders of, um, you don't want to put your tasks, all your tasks on here. Maybe reminders of things that you might have to do, but not so much tasks. Now let, let me switch over to my personal calendar so I could show you how I use the personal calendar. Now here's the other cool thing about uh, Google Calendar. You can view multiple calendars at a time. So I've got a personal calendar here, and you can see that's in blue. I've got my reminders calendar, that's in orange. I'm clicking on, off, on, off. And I've also got a bills calendar. So you, you see I've got a bills personal calendar. You could also have a bills work calendar. Um, you could have, a, I mean, if you run a business, you would have obviously business-related bills. But um, your personal calendar for bills, this is just to remind you of when things are due. Um, now, just to be more efficient, I'll usually schedule like an auto pay on certain bills to make sure that they're just automatically paid. But this is, let me show you the personal calendar. Let me get rid of the reminders for now. And you can see that I've got all these reminders on here. The only thing that goes here are appointments and deadlines. So any kind of an appointment, like right here on the 13th, I have an interview with Ilana. I know who Ilana is. I know where the interview is going to be. And I also include any travel plans. So you can see I have a Minneapolis trip right here, a St. Louis trip right here, a DC trip right there. So. One other thing I want you to avoid putting on this personal calendar is any tasks. So I try to make sure, you know, I keep um, deadlines on here, any travel plans. You can see I have a wedding, a any really important events that I know that I'm going to be going to, which I guess are similar to appointments. Um, so keep, keep that in mind and avoid putting the things to do on here. Now, Google Calendar does have a tasks calendar that you see right here. This is by default, okay? 
Now, I do not use the tasks calendar. I used to use it, and then I found a lot of problems with it. I'll show you in this webinar a better way to handle your tasks or things to do. Um, and by the way, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to tell you how you should be doing the best way. This has worked out really well for me, so I kind of want to share my system, and maybe you'll see it works out well for you. Maybe you have a better system, or maybe you decide to take my system and make tweaks to it to make it best and customized for, for you. Now, let me give you some other ideas on how you can uh, use this calendar. Um, make sure, you see how you can have multiple calendars? Make sure you don't have too many calendars. Some people, they see this and they're like, oh, I'm going to have a personal calendar, and I'm going to have a birthdays calendar, I'm going to have a bills calendar, I'm going to have a reminders calendar, an events calendar, and 10 other calendars, and all of a sudden, everything gets lost in the shuffle because there's just way too many calendars. I want to keep it as simple as possible, so I stick with using three calendars. A personal calendar for appointments and deadlines, a bills calendar for obviously bills, and a reminders calendar for things that I need to be reminded of. Um, so the other nice thing about Google Calendar, it works offline. If you click on this little settings button right here, you can see right here there's an offline tab, so that's really helpful. Um, and I also want you to know, because some people are like, well, I'm already using a calendar application like uh, Microsoft Outlook. Um, or maybe you have to use that because at work that's all they use. Or maybe you've got a Mac and you use the Mac's calendar system. Uh, I think it's called iCal. Well, this integrates very easily with Outlook, and it integrates very easily with the Mac's calendar system as well. So keep in mind, just because you have it on a Mac or you've got an Outlook calendar doesn't mean you can't sync them up between these things. And by the way, that's a good idea to do. That way you could always access it um, in the cloud, so to speak. Now, I want you to know one other thing. You can have multiple views. I, I have this default view of a month. Well, what if you want to view a day or a week or you know the month view that I had? Or maybe you just want to see the next five days or an agenda view. So whatever works best for you, you can set the default view in the settings area right here. So again, this is how I remember birthdays, appointments, reminders, things like that. Um, I want you to, however, this is not going to work if you don't check it. So here's what you really need to do. And by the way, this is only... This is the one reason why I was able to start remembering every single day, you know, not to forget birthdays, not to forget appointments. I would get into the habit of checking my personal and all my calendars here, my three calendars, every single evening to see what's coming up the next day. And I would also take a quick glance at it in the morning um, just to make sure that I don't miss any appointments or opportunities to wish someone a happy birthday. So get into the habit. Make sure you have some kind of a daily routine where the, you know, the, before you leave work, you just review your calendar so you know what's coming up later in the day, next day or the next week, um, and then first thing in the morning. So I try to avoid checking my email first thing in the morning, um, and that's more so to keep myself productive. I find myself much more productive if I work on the most important tasks that I need to complete that day and check my calendar rather than just, you know, diving into my email and encountering, you know, 5 or 10 or 15 problems or just dealing with deleting a bunch of spam. Now, how does it, let, let me go back to the slides here. So we've talked about birthdays and appointments, and that's how it, uh, that's how it feels to be able to kind of uh, remember all this stuff. It feels like success. Well, let's talk about passwords and things to do. The problem here is that there's simply too many things to remember. So the simple so solution to this is to let technology do it for you. Just like we're letting the Google Calendar remind us of stuff, we're letting Google Calendar remind us of birthdays, appointments. Well, I want to talk about how do we you know, remember our passwords? How do we remember our things to do? So the idea here is very, again, the whole idea behind this webinar is to let technology or to use technology as an extension of your brain to remember, remember things. The system that I like to use for remembering passwords and tasks and many more things, by the way, which I'll explain, the tool that I use is Evernote. Now, some of you might already be familiar with Evernote, or maybe you've heard of Evernote. I want to show you how I use Evernote, so even if you are already familiar with this application, um, be patient because I'm going to show you how I use it and you might get some ideas from it. Now, if you haven't heard of Evernote, Evernote is a great way to help you remember everything. Um, I like to think of it as my, my digital toolbox to remember all the, th all the stuff that I need to get out of my head, all the stuff that I think I'm going to forget. Um, and it's probably best if I just show you how you can get this tool. Um, let me go to the website here. So I'm going to open up. It's just evernote.com. That's where you can get it. 
and this is a free application by the way. Um, they also have a premium application, but I would say about 90-95% of the people that use this do not need to use the premium application because it's just got advanced features that you probably wouldn't use. But you could sign up for the free one. They give you a ton of storage space, which I like. And by the way, this works on the web, on your desktop, whether you have a PC or a Mac. Also works uh, as an add-on to your browser, which we'll talk about. Um, it also works as on your iPhone, on your Android device, on a tablet, so it's very, very flexible, and that's the thing I like best about it. It's not like it's only for the iPhone, or only for Android, or only for Macs. This works across all the platforms. So, when you create an account, and this I kind of like, the, the very simple tagline, remember everything, because this really does allow you to kind of keep everything in one place. Um, let me show you the desktop version that I have, and I'm on a Mac right now. I've got a desktop PC at home, but I'm on my laptop. Let me show you my Evernote right here. So I'm just going to open up. Um, if I want to create a new note, I'm going to click Create a New Note. Now, these notes can be anything. So this might be a certain kind of a task that I need to do. It could be something I need to remember later on. It could be maybe I'm using it for a journal entry. By the way, here are some re ways people use Evernote. Some people use it to get organized. Some people use it to stay more productive. Uh, some people use it for taking notes in class. Um, some people use it to collect their favorite recipes. Um, so let's, you could just take a snapshot of a recipe from your phone and upload it to your Evernote account. There's a variety of ways that you can use Evernote. Um, I use it actually to keep track of business cards. So I'll take a picture with the app on my phone, the Evernote app on my phone, uploads it in here, and I have a business card notebook. Notebooks, by the way, are these little things on the side here. I'll explain what I have over here in a moment. Um, notebooks you could think of as folders. Now, they're also good, uh, sometimes I'll clip websites. Uh, uh, you can brainstorm ideas in here. Um, you can use it for travel plans, to manage projects. I've definitely used Evernote a lot for managing projects. By the way, you can share these uh, notebooks as well. Um, some people use it to plan weddings. Other people use it to remember people that they meet. And by the way, you can also, uh, one of the things I like to do is scan all those paper bills and receipts and warranties that I don't want to keep on file as paper and keep track of vital records. So maybe you've got you know, a birth certificate that you want to keep in here or your social, a copy of your social security card or ID just in case it gets lost. Um, maybe you've got a business license. Um, keeping all these things in here, but I want to talk about how to remember passwords and things to do. I'm going to show you how I use it for that. Now, a few other options that I want to make you aware of, whatever note this is going to be, you can actually, of course, you can type all you want in here, um, but you can also do this. You can create an audio note, so I can click here, and I can say, all right, record audio, and it's recording the audio. I can save that, and I could also click on the webcam, and it works as a web, you know, if you've got a webcam on your computer, you can take a video note. Um, I could attach any kind of document that I want in here, a PDF maybe, or an image. Um, you could also just drag and drop from your desktop in here. So it's really useful to keep your stuff in one, in one spot. Now, <clears throat> let me show you really quickly how I use it for passwords. Um, let me delete this note because this was just a test. First of all, I create a passwords document. Now, some people will be like, well, I know, that's. let, let me explain how, how I would do this. First of all, I would not call it passwords. Why? What if somebody got onto my computer and uh, they see this document, they open up Evernote and they see a document called passwords. It's really obvious to them what's in there. So I don't call it passwords. I call it something else. Um, I'm not going to tell you what I call it, but you can give it some kind of a name that only you will remember. I don't know. Maybe you want to call it usernames or uh, maybe you want to call it a uh, trunk or some other creative name that you will know that, okay, that name refers to my passwords document. So let's say we called it uh, usernames. And we get into the, we start getting into the habit of every time I register on a new website, I quickly open up my Evernote, this note, this note that I created, and I'll say, okay, what's the website? Let's say it's my gmail.com. So I'll put gmail.com, and then I'll just put my email, so I'll put my email, whatever it is, at gmail.com, and then I will type my password. But whatever my password is, um, let's say the password is um, what today webinar. I'm not going to type the password out like that. If, the web, if it was today's webinar, I would just type out enough to give me a hint. So I might put, let's say I know it's today webinar. I'm just going to put T, I'll put some, you know, stars here and then I'll put uh, W for webinar 
And if there's some numbers like a one, two, three, four, or you know, maybe it's my address, I might put a five. And you know what your address is, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put stars here. Now, if the, the reason I do this is if anybody ever did get in into this passwords document, it would be horrible if I typed out every single password and kept it in here, because then someone has access to everything, um, and I would have to change everything, which is would be a pain. So I type it out like this. So let's say this webinar, th this password. Let's say the real password is actually today webinar five thousand. Okay. Well, if this is the actual password, I'm going to type it like this in my document. And that is, you know, you know how we use passwords multiple times for multiple sites. No one uses a different password for every single site that they use because it would just be way too many, way too much to handle. So I'll do it like this. And of course, every so often it's a good idea to change your passwords and so on. But I would leave it like this because when I look at this later on, let's say I forget my Gmail password. I know I could request you know, there's a way, password retrieval options, but for me, I just open up Evernote really quick. I look at this, and then I can see, oh, it's that password because I see this. That gives me just enough of a hint. Or maybe you actually type a hint in here. Now, I wouldn't type hint, you know, your dog's name, because then again, if somebody broke into this, maybe they know your dog's name or your address, or you know, I would just put, you know, I wouldn't even type hint. I would just put dog name, or I would put, you know whatever reminds you of it so keep keep that in mind that's how I handle passwords and the nice thing about these passwords by the way um, they are saved offline so if you're not online you can still access this document um, they're also synced up to the cloud so if you do not have access to your computer you can go on another computer go to evernote.com retrieve this uh, retrieve this right here now I guess the main thing that you have to remember is to make sure that you remember the password to your Evernote account and uh, even if you don't, you can still access the desktop version because it doesn't ask you for your password every single time that you want to log in. Um, now, what about things to do? Let me uh, delete this passwords document. Things to do. I want to give you an idea how I use this to remember you know, the variety of things that I have to do, the tasks, and so on. Now, if there's any kind of thing that I have to do that is an appointment or a deadline, I will make sure that it goes on my personal calendar in Google Calendar. However, there are things where there are tasks where, you know, you might want to get them done today, but if it doesn't get done today, it's not the end of the world. So, where do we put those kind of tasks? Well, what I like to do is I create these multiple notebooks here. And you can see the main note, you can see how you could have notebooks within notebooks. So, I have a notebook up here called GTD. Now, that stands for getting things done. And it's named after uh, this uh, some of you might already be familiar with this. There was this book that was published in the 90s um, called Getting Things Done. And it was written by David Allen. It's considered a business classic. I would definitely recommend it. Um, but I want to show you how I've implemented his system, but kind of customized it to work within Evernote. Now, when I first read that book, it just didn't apply to me because I was in college at the time. And uh, it, it just didn't, I didn't read the book in the 90s. Um, I didn't go to college in the 90s. I went to college between 2000 and 2010. But, um, oh, and it, no, it didn't take me 10 years. It took me four years. But the idea here was in college, this didn't apply to me because I wasn't working in a professional environment. I was basically working part-time on weekends and sometimes during the week. So it didn't really work. So after I got out of college and I really started working, I was, I was trying to see if getting things done, that book would apply to me. And it's still, the reason I didn't like it, it was very paper heavy. So he, he would describe his system, you know, you got to have file folders and things like that and I was like there's no way I'm gonna be having file cabinets and when I started up my business it just wasn't practical because you're working from home from coffee shops traveling all that stuff so later when I read the book and I already knew about Evernote I was like how can I take you know the principle the ideas that he has in that book which are really good ideas how to get things done and implement it within Evernote and that's what I'm gonna show you today so one of the principles behind this getting things done system is to put everything in a central location initially and then filter from there so that's what this inbox notebook is for so anything that let's say I take a picture of a business card okay it goes in the inbox initially now later I can take that business card and I could throw it into my other notebook which is called business cards over here but for now it might just start off in inbox now anything that's in the inbox the simple question is always, is this item actionable? So I might have an item in here called call Bob regarding 
uh, regarding tomorrow's project, let's say. Okay, well, call Bob regarding tomorrow's project. Um, if that's a, a particular task and that's actionable, and I know that's going to be a very quick thing, I'm going to take this note and I drag it into one of my other notebooks. So you see I have some other notebooks here called Now, Projects. Projects ongoing, projects other, and then I have some action notebooks. I want you to focus on these right here. These are all the actionable items, tasks that I need to do. Well, these tasks right here can be done in five minutes. That's why I call it action five minutes. Now these right here, action six to 30 minutes, means it's probably going to take me more than five minutes. So it's a single task, but it might take me 10, 15, 20, or 30 minutes. Now, the reason why I say up to 30 minutes, what if a task takes you more than 30 minutes? Well, the chances are if it takes me more than 30 minutes, that is not exactly a task. That's more of a project, and it'll go in one of these folders. Okay? So projects are defined as anything that has more than one task involved or maybe more than one person involved. Well, action items are things like this. Call Bob. That's only one single task. But what if you had to, you know, redesign website? You know, redesigning a website, that's going to take, you know, first you might have to, you know, buy a domain. Next, you might have to, uh, you know, research, you know, um, decide on, you know, what navigation you're going to have on it. And then you might have to create content. So all these are, set, are tasks within a project. So that's you know what a project is. This would go into one of my projects folders, and this call would go into either action five minutes or action six to thirty minutes. If I know this is, and that gives me an idea of when what to work on. Now I also have a now folder, and in the now folder, what I have is just basically I've got a variety of things in the now folder. So if you look, I've got a daily routine checklist, um, an operational tasks and calls uh, list. I have a project list, and I also have a marketing task list. Now you can sort these however you want, but the idea, the, the, re, the way that I use this, um, this daily routine, this is what I work from every single day. The project list is just keeping a running list of projects that I need to be aware of. Um, marketing tasks, these are these are my two task lists right here and what I'll do with these is I'll basically put the reason I have them separated I have a variety of marketing tasks that I want to get done and I have operational tasks and also calls so a phone call is not necessarily going to help promote my business um, operational tasks might be you know making changes or fixing something on the website but then there are marketing tasks there are things that I do that are you know promotional so I keep those task lists separate now, the daily routine checklist, let me give you an example of how I do this so maybe you get an idea how you might do it for yourself. Let's say we were creating a daily routine checklist right now. We create new notes and we would call this, you know, daily routine. And you've got certain things that you do on a daily basis. So some, for some people, they check their email the first thing. I don't like to do that. Um, usually I'm checking my calendar. Check calendar for reminders and appointments, let's say. Okay, and after I'm done with that, I create another little list that I call MIT. MIT doesn't stand for Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It stands for Most Important Tasks. So Most Important Task for today may have been, um, you know, create slides for webinar or prepare for the webinar. And then maybe I also have another task um, that's really, really important, which is uh, I, I've got to send a recording. Send recording of webinar to registrants, people that registered. Okay, and then maybe my other important task maybe is to call my mama. All right, now my most important tasks, here's something really important to remember as a rule, because this is the rule I've generated. It's never more than three items. Okay, these are the most important things. And then I basically have the rest of the routine. Okay, and that would be after I've done those first three things, then I could check my email. Now, these, these things right here for under MIT, most important tasks, sometimes I only have one. And I, it, usually the most important task is something that I've been procrastinating on or something that really needs to get done. You ever have that one task where you want it, you really got to get it done, but you kind of dread, you kind of put it off because you're like, man, this is going to take me a while or this is going to be tough, kind of challenging. I'll tell you what, if you get that done first thing in the morning, you're going to feel unbelievable by 930 because you'll be like, man, I got so much done and it's not even 930. I haven't even checked my email. And this is why I have a maximum of three tasks 
and a minimum of one for MIT. Now, for the rest of my routine, that would be maybe, you know, checking my email, um, you know, making calls that I have to make. Now, by the way, you can link this. You might have a list of people that you have to call. So you might create a separate note called calls that I have to make. And in this note, I can add checkboxes for, you know, call Bob regarding blah, blah, blah. Call Sarah, call Jim, and so on and so forth. And what I can do is I, you simply will take this list and you want to link it to the daily routine. So let me show you what I mean. So I want to create a link that goes from here to my call list. So I'm actually going to, uh, hang on, my call list is right over, let's just call this call list. And this would have checkboxes, you see checkboxes over here, call Bob, call Joe, and so on, you guys get the idea. Well, so what I do is I right click on this note, and I click copy note link. That's a link to the actual note. And then I go under my daily routine, and I've got this calls area right here and I will just link that so I'll right click I'll click link here and then I'll click add and I'll just add that link right over there and then what that does is as I'm going through my list let's say I check my calendar and then I'm like alright that's done alright then I get these things done okay perfect I'm making progress through my day and then I'm checking my, I'm done checking my email actually this might be you know check and respond to email um, and by the way, um, if you're looking for some email management techniques, how to read and respond to your email faster, we did a webinar on this a number of weeks ago. So you can just check that out on the irisreading.com website. Now, once I get to calls, I will click on calls, and that takes me to my other list. And I could, be, I could just start working from here. And then I could go, once I'm done with all these calls, and I'm like, done, done. I go back over here, and I say, all right, this is done. Let me get to my next thing. Now, my next thing might be, you know, do 10 marketing tasks. Do 10 operational tasks. Now, why am I saying 10? This might be an arbitrary number. You might say 5 or 10 or 7 or whatever it is. But it's like a minimum number. And the reason why I, this, uh, remember I told you I had this list over here called marketing tasks and operational tasks? You, there are lots of things on each one of these lists. And these lists right here, there, there's so many things that there's no way I'm going to get it all done in one day. So what I try to do is when, I'm, when I've got my daily routine list, I'll say, you know what, you got to do at least, you got to make some progress on this list every single day. So part of your routine is going to be to get 10 of those things done, 10 of the operational things done. And as I'm going through, I'm making more check marks, and I feel like I'm getting some stuff done today. Well, um, one other thing that I try to do is to read for a certain amount of time every day. So I might say, okay, read for 30 minutes, or I might say read for one hour, or read for whatever it is. Now, I get about, uh, when I'm taking the, uh, I take the train over to work, um, downtown here in Chicago and what I'll do is uh, I'll usually get some reading done on the train on the way to and from and that's a good way for me to get reading done but I might want to get some reading done while I'm at work maybe reading the news maybe reading my RSS feeds maybe reading articles that I wanted to read later well this might be my time to do it now I also have other things there are things that you're trying to constantly learn so for example um, I'm trying to learn Spanish. Now, to learn Spanish, you can't just do it once a week. You got to learn a, le a little bit every day. And I'll put like learn Spanish minimum 30 minutes. And then uh, there's one other thing that I'm wor working on right now. I have a little bit of a programming background, but I'm trying to become a lot better at programming. Um, I want to become an expert programmer so I could create, you know, different apps and things like that, um, wor wor make my website better and so on. So I want to learn programming and I want to do that maybe a minimum. 30 minutes a day. So you can already get the idea of what I'm trying to create with this daily routine, and I actually call this a daily routine checklist. Now, why a checklist? As you can see, there's checkboxes here, and I want you to know there's so a little something about checkboxes. They actually make you more productive. Um, there was a really great book written on this topic called The Checklist Manifesto. It's written by a doctor. He was talking about how um, he was making a proposition that doctors and the pe people that work in medicine should utilize checklists more often, like pilots do and other, uh, other professions where they want to mi minimize mistakes that they make. And the idea here is that checklists will actually make sure that you cover all your bases. And this is th how I've been using over the past few months, a way to make sure that I get thing, a lot of stuff done. 
Um, and this is really a good way to keep track of it, and I do it with an Evernote. That way, I can still check my daily routine checklist on my iPad. I can check it out on my laptop, on my desktop, on my phone, and I can move through the things that I have to move through on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, I hope that's given you an idea of how I kind of work through these two different areas. Um, basically, to summarize, to rem I, I want to keep this simple a system that is very simple. One of the problems was I used to use a lot of different applications for a lot of different things. I was shifting between using maybe I think like eight or nine different applications and then I was like you know what what are the basic things I have to remember? You know birthdays and appointments and reminders those can go on a calendar so to remember my birthdays and appointments I use Google Calendar and to remember everything else almost everything else passwords things to do projects and so on I put it in Evernote and now I've got this really simple system where I don't have to worry about wait did I put that reminder in my calendar or in my Evernote I know that reminders always have to go on my calendar um, so you end up creating this system that you always go by and then it really allows you to get so much more done so I hope this webinar has given you some insights into how I handle um, these various things, remembering birthdays and appointments, different reminders, um, passwords and things to do. And if you have any additional questions or if you have some suggestions, there are a lot of other things you can do with these applications. And I, we haven't even scratched the surface really in terms of other things that we have to remember. That's what this memory improvement course is all about. So I hope you check out some of the other webinars that are going on with it. We're going to be talking about different systems such as the link system, the peg system, the substitute word system. The, uh, you know, how to create memory palaces. These are all different um, memory techniques to help you remember things. Today, I wanted to talk about a very simple solution for commonly forgotten things. So I hope you've gotten some good ideas out of it. And if you want to touch base with me, feel free to shoot me an email. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter. Um, also, we do this at companies and schools. We've done it for employees of Google. We did this for employees of NASA. We've done it at Harvard. Um, if you want to invite us to your company or school, feel free to get in touch with me, and I'd be happy to help organize that. I want to thank you for taking part in this uh, webinar and kind of supporting our program. Really appreciate it. And so, again, thank you. Utilize some of the tips that I've given you, and enjoy the rest of your day.